Okay, in this video, we are going to have a look at an electrical control circuit, which you can see on my breadboard, and this will pertain to motorcycles. So if you're rebuilding a vintage bike, or if you build custom motorcycles, you might be interested in this circuit. Now you could buy off-the-shelf control boxes when you're building a custom motorcycle, and they have input switches, like you can see here, and they got driver outputs, and they have a microcontroller that's controlling the whole circuit. Now this circuit here is controlling the brake and tail light, which you can see here, this is 1157 bulb, it's an incandescent bulb, which are still being used on the, on the old bikes. Now the new bikes have LEDs, but if you're building a vintage bike, you're going you're gonna to see an incandescent bulb. And inside 1157, there's two filaments. There's a 21 watt filament, and there's a 5 watt filament. Now the 5 watt filament is the tail light, and the 21 watt filament is the brake light. So I have a little control button here. This button here controls the brake, and this button, this switch here, turns on the headlight, which will turns on the tail light. So if I turn on the tail light, you can see there's my tail light. I turn it off. This is my brake light. I could have my tail light on, and then my brake light, tail light off, brake light. Now this circuit only uses one wire to control this bulb. Now if you notice over here, you can see the black wire, that's the common ground, so that will be grounded on the, on the chassis of the bike. And then there's two wires, one to control the 21 watt filament, and there's another wire to control the 5 watt filament. But you can see here I have them connected together. So you'll only have to run one wire from the handlebars of the bike to the tail light, and you'll be able to control it as a brake light or a tail light. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of my setup. So you can see the controller, which is the Arduino Nano, and pin 2 is the brake input, and pin 3 is the taillight input, and I have two switches, a push button and a toggle, and when they're activated, they'll, they'll input a ground to pin 2 for the brake and pin 3 for the taillight. Now pin 9 of the Arduino Nano is driving the P-channel MOSFET, which is configured as a high side switcher, and now I'll put a voltage into the 1157 bulb. Now the filaments are in parallel, so one side is connected to the chassis ground, the other side is connected to the output of the MOSFET, which is being driven by pin 9. So when we activate the brake switch, we'll get a brake light, and we activate the tail light switch, we'll get a tail light. We do that with one wire, and the way it works, we use PWM, pulse width modulation. So to turn on one of the lights, we'll give out a 33% duty cycle output, and that will turn on the tail light. And if we want the brake light to come on, we do 100% PWM, and both filaments will come on, and we'll get a brake light application. So that's how we can control a tail light and a brake light using one wire from the Arduino Nano. Okay, I mapped my PWM signal coming out of my controller to my keyboard, so I can control a duty cycle. So if I press the up key, it's going to increase the duty cycle, and if I press the down key, it's going to decrease the duty cycle. So as, it, as I increase the duty cycle, you can see the 21 watt filament is going to come on first because it's the lowest resistance of the two filaments. So as I apply some PWM signal, increase the duty cycle, you can see it's coming on. So around 33% it's going to be equal to a tail light. And then when we want to go to a brake light, we go 100%. And it's going to get really bright, so it's going to, my, my camera is probably going to compensate. So there's your brake. We take it down, 33% There's our tail, and then 0% is off. Okay, here's the code running in my Nano, and it's written in fourth. I'm using interactive Arduino, and I'm using timer number one in the Atmega 320p microcontroller as my PWM timer counter. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail in the code because I'm actually going to make a PWM video, but pin 9 is the output of the Nano. That's my PWM output. And here I'm assigning 7,999 to my top value, which will give me 8,000 steps. And they'll give me a PWM frequency of 2 kilohertz. Now if we go down to the next program, it's called PWM. That's where I assigned the up-down keys on my keyboard so I could adjust the PWM width. And the next program, it's called Break. So it's a begin until loop. It's a continuous loop until I hit any key to get out of the loop. First thing it does is checks pin 2 to see if it's low. So if pin 2 is low, it's going to output 100% duty cycle PWM because that's the brake light. 
And if pin 3 is low and pin 2 is high, then it's going to output a 33% duty cycle PWM, because that's the tail light. And if pin 2 is high and pin 3 is high, then it's going to output a 0% duty cycle PWM, because that's off. And that's going to continuously run in this loop and give us our output PWM. Now the main word in break is percent. If we go up to percent, here's percent. So if we give a value to this word percent, like 33, it's going to take 33 and multiply it by 7,999 divided by 100 and put that into the output compare register. And that will give us a PWM signal of 33%. So we could hook up the scope to my circuit and we could play around with this word percent. Okay, I have my scope connected up to pin 9 of my nano, which is my PWM output. So I'll enter 33% on the keyboard. So 33%, hit enter. There's 33%. I'll type in 50%, hit enter. And I'll type 95%, hit enter. So that's how easy it is to control the PWM output. So in my code, I just have to write the percentage of what I want, and I'll output that on pin 9. Okay, another feature that you could add to your controller is an accelerometer like the LIS3DH module and you can mount it on your bike and if you go into a panic stop it will measure the g-forces of deceleration and if it exceeds a certain level it will turn your your brake light into a fast flash so that will give some warning to the driver behind you also when you park your bike and you put on the kickstand it will be on an angle and now you can take the three values of the x and y and z axis and put that in memory and if something gets on your bike and puts it into the upright position or tries to start it to create motion it'll actually set off alarm and disable your bike so that's another feature you could add is an accelerometer and so next time if you're working on a bike and you see one wire going to the brake light tail light now you know how it works